All right, so now we're going to talk about a reaction that we've actually already learned about way back when, when we were talking about addition reactions to alkenes, uh, but now we're going to learn the mechanism, and that's the radical addition of HBr. Um, and actually, real quick, just to let's start here, actually. Remember, we talked about what happens when you have HBr reacting with an alkene. Well, you have this Markovnikov addition where the bromine ends up on the more highly substituted carbon. But then we said that if you tossed in some peroxide there, you would actually get the anti-Markovnikov addition, right? So now my bromine is on the less highly substituted carbon. So this right here, this second reaction, this is the radical addition of HP. And the peroxide is playing a key role here. That's what's making it a radical addition because peroxide is what we call a radical initiator. So similar to how we can take these dihalides, Cl2, Br2, hit them with lighter heat and they will homolytically cleave, peroxides are that much more likely to homolytically cleave. They cleave very, very easily. So they're a really efficient way to generate radicals, okay? A peroxide is anything that has an oxygen oxygen bond like this. Okay. And then there are what are called acyl peroxides, which just means that they're located directly next to these carbonyl groups. And these are even more favorable, right? So you can tell how favorable it is to form these by looking at their delta H's. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, acyl peroxides are great. Alkyl peroxides are just as good. But by adding this peroxide into the solution, we're sort of ensuring that it's going to be a radical reaction because this initiator will go on to react with any HBr that's in solution to create a radical. Okay, so let's take a little bit look uh, more of a look at that mechanism here. So again, the first step, our initiation step, is going to be to create that radical by homolytically cleaving that um, peroxide. Okay, so that gives us. Right, it's an initiation step. So we start out with no radicals and we've generated two new ones. And then this will go and react with um, HBr in order to eventually form your bromine radical, okay? So what we see is that there is a hydrogen abstraction of the, from the HBr, uh, uh, yeah, from the HBr and by the uh, peroxide radical. All right, now, what we're going to see is that this uh, bromine radical re will react with an alkene in an addition, a radical addition mechanism, right? So similar to how we had other addition reaction with alkenes, this is now a radical addition where this bromine will come and form a new bond with one of the electrons from the pi bond. All right, but now the question is sort of like, well, which, what happens, right? There's two electrons in this pi bond here that I've just broken. One of them I'm saying is gonna go to form a new bromine carbon bond. Where does the other one go? It can either go onto this carbon here and that would form this type of radical, or it could jump onto this carbon here, and that would form this radical, right? So which one of these is actually correct? Well, remembering back to the beginning of the chapter, which one of these radicals is going to be more stable? It's going to be the tertiary radical. Tertiary radicals are more stable than secondary radicals, and thus this is the radical that we'd expect to be favored. So when this bond cleaves, that electron jumps onto that carbon. Secondary radical, not as stable, so it's not formed. Okay, and notice that this is how we have this anti-Markovnikov addition, because the radical formed on the more highly substituted carbon, bromine went on to the less highly substituted carbon. OK, 
okay? Um, so that's the next step here is going to be this addition of bromine to our pi bond, homolytically cleaving that pi bond and creating our radical. Okay, so that is the uh, an addition um, or radical addition to an alkene. That's the next step. And then the last one, or the, you know, the next step in propagation rather is now that radical reacts with HBr through a hydrogen abstraction. So removing that hydrogen and again, creating that bromine radical, All right? So we started out with a bromine radical. We had an addition to the double bond and then a hydrogen abstraction of, hydro of HBr to now create another bromine reaction. So these are these initiation steps where I'm starting out with a radical on one side and generating another on the other side. And then finally, this reaction will finally end when two bromine radicals find one another and couple in that termination step. 